How's it going everybody? My name's Dave Whipple and you're watching Bush Radical. One thing that's got me interested in the knife business is the fact that everybody shares information, that there's really no secrets. That being said, I'm going to release my video, How to Make an Ulu. Last year I shot this video. I had made, I don't know, a couple dozen and my process has changed quite a bit. So I'm going to just show you a couple things quick that I do different than I did in the original Ulu video. And if you always wanted an Ulu and you didn't get one last time, I'll have a batch of probably 60 to 80 before I run out of material this fall. And those are going to be available here in about three weeks. And if you want to make your own, I'm going to release that documentary. It was almost like an hour long, How to Make an Ulu. So that video was shot like 75 Ulus ago. And I have changed the way I do stuff. And I just want to take a moment in this video and show you uh, some of the things I do just a little bit different than I had done in that video. And if you want to make your own Ulu, pop on over to my next new video, which is uh, how to make an Ulu. Now I make my Ulus out of recycled vintage handsaws, a carpenter's handsaw. Some of the things I might not have shown in the first video or that I do different now, uh, I'm going to show you guys those right now. The surface preparation is one thing that I don't believe I covered. So when it comes to surface preparation, I just use a couple things. I use one of these foam drywall sanding blocks. I take a, a piece of sandpaper and just use a sandpaper. And I also use a shop vac so that when I'm sanding the saw blade and it gets a lot of rust buildup, I can just shop vac it off. Let me show you. Now you generally don't have to sand down into this area that's too thin to make an ulu out of, but you've got to make sure that uh, any part that's going to be an ulu, it gets cleaned off really well. From here I'll kick the vacuum on. Just clean up the rust. Now you can do this with WD-42 by wetting the blade down and doing a wet sanding. That way you're not dealing with dust. But I find uh, I like to keep the blades as dry as possible. That way when I get to the place where I'm actually epoxying the handles on, I can just acetone the blade, clean it off real good, and then uh, work the handle material on. Beautiful, beautiful etch. On a saw like this that has such a nice, interesting pattern, I'm going to take and make an ulu right out of this area. And just so I can make sure I utilize this, this amazing etch work. Now here's some bits and pieces from a saw that I'm breaking out right now into ulu patterns. I've taken and laid out all my ulu patterns already. Now one thing I do a lot different than when I started. When I first started doing ulus, I would chuck up the piece of saw blade in a vise and take a hammer and just strike the very, very, very edge of the steel and break it out that way. From there I actually moved on to a great big chisel, about a foot long chisel with about an inch and a quarter wide chisel blade on the end. That works even better for precision cutting that blank out. What I'm using now, what I've kind of graduated to, I actually use a wood splitting wedge. But if you take a brand new wedge like this one and clean the edge up so that it's you know fairly fairly pointed, then basically you have a chisel with like a two and a quarter inch wide blade. It's got a ton of weight behind it. This is what I found has worked the best for me for breaking out blanks. Let me show you. So basically what I do is I, I have my line where my pattern has been laid out. And I take that line and get it right down to the edge of the vise. Sets down to where I want it. I just tighten up the handle. Take my wedge, which I found has worked the best. Good clean break. Not perfect, you know, it's going to need some hand work. But it's better than the chisel and it's better than doing it with just a hammer. Now with that wedge, have all this area to work with and all that weight behind it. 
Also got this nice giant area on the back to beat on as opposed to something half this size that would be the end of a big cold chisel. The sludge I like to use for it, I've got this guy, it's, it's about a two pounder. It's a you know small sludge hammer and that's the sludge that seems to work nicest with the splitting wedge. And I think the wedge is what I'm going to stick with because I can't see anything better. This steel is literally, I don't know, it's probably a 32nd of an inch. I've found that uh, I can do the sides and top easy with the belt grinder, but when it comes to the bevel, I'm still doing the bevels by hand with a file. That way I know that I'm not even remotely jeopardizing the temper of the cutting edge. That's what I really want. I want to make sure there's a 100% guarantee that the temper on that edge is not affected in any way and it's going to be able to take an edge and keep it. Another thing I might add is uh, if you're going to be breaking out stuff inside of a shop, make sure you wear safety glasses. Make sure you uh, hang up some kind of a t-shirt or an old flannel or something behind your work area. It's kind of a backstop. Like if you're in a batting cage, you know, they got the, 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 the net there that you're hitting the balls into so they don't go out the street. Kind of the same thing here. You don't want sharp chips of hardened steel flying around your shop. So wear eye protection, use some kind of a backstop so when the chip comes off of the ulu, it'll hit that backstop, lose all of its ping, and uh, it's not going to fly back and hit you in the face. Another thing to add is if you're working with a wedge, now a lot of times I'm working on a vise, something might happen, you just do something a little bit wrong, you drop your hammer. It's not bad when it's a little framing hammer, it's a, it's a bad deal when it's a sludge. But I will say, I have dropped this splitting wedge several times. If you're going to do it that way, you better be ready to move your feet. Because a splitting wedge like this is not something you want to drop on your toe, especially when you're standing on a concrete floor. So if you wanted an ulu and you didn't get one, if you did get one, you want another one, I've got ulus coming out here very shortly. If you'd like to make your own, just stay tuned to the channel and catch the next video, which is going to be, it's going to be the video I shot last year about how to make an ulu. A couple things will be different than what I just showed you. I would uh, substitute the, the wedge or a big chisel for a hammer alone. Hammer alone works just fine, but uh, when I shot that video I was kind of dabbling with the chisel a bit. The chisel works better than just the hammer. The splitting wedge works better than both of them. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, hit the share button, hit the sub button, hit all those buttons down there. My name is Dave Whipple and you've been watching Bush Radical. Be radical, eh? See you soon.